Shalom, Alchem, and welcome back to the broadcast. Peace be upon you. I'm Sean. Website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. Well, this week's Torah portion is called Korach. And the let me read the portion summary for you real quick from TorahPortions.org, which says, Korah was the name of the prominent Levi, of a prominent Levi. It is also the name of a, the 38th reading from the Torah. It comes from the first verse of this week's reading, which says, Now Korah, the son of Izhar, took action. This week's Torah reading tells the story of how Korah led in an unsuccessful rebellion against Moses and Aaron. After thwarting the insurrection, God confirms Aaron in the priesthood and provides additional legislation regarding priestly and Levitical privileges and responsibilities. So today's outline, we have the revolt of Korach, Dathan, and Ab and Abaram, the building of Aaron's rod, the responsibilities of the priests and the Levites, and the priest portion. So that is what we're going to be getting into today. I've personally really enjoyed, while I mostly study the from the King James Bible, I have enjoyed doing our Torah portions recently from the Hallelujah Scriptures, so I'm going to continue to do that today. So if you're hearing a few words that you're not typically used to hearing, uh, it's because uh, the Hallelujah Scriptures tries to bring back some of the uh, Hebrew words, specifically when talking about the names, it's using their actual names and the names of cities uh, or nations, for example. Egypt's name at that time was at actually Mitzrayim. Um, and then you'll hear Yisrael instead of Israel. And then, of course, Yehovah, or some people will pronounce it Yahuwah, uh, for God's name, uh, which is what's actually there in the text, versus the Lord. Um, and someday, hopefully soon, probably, probably not starting next month, but hopefully starting in August, I'm going to start writing another book. Um, I'm probably going to be dealing with uh, some of those thoughts about God's name and some other things. More information to come about that in the future. All right. Without further delay, let's uh, go ahead and dig right in. We're going to be reading Numbers chapter 16 through chapter 18. So two chapters. Let's begin. Verse 1. And Korach, son of Yitzhar, son of Gaheth, son of Levi, took both Dathan and Abram, Abiram, or Abram, the sons of Eliab, and On, son of Peleth, sons of Reuben. And they rose up before Moshe with some of the children of Israel, two hundred and fifty leaders of the congregation, called ones of the meeting, men of name. And they assembled against Moshe and against Aaron, and said to them, Enough of you, for all the congregation is Kodesh, all of them, and Yehovah is in their midst. Why then do you lift up yourselves above the assembly of Yehovah? And when Moshe heard, he fell on his face and spoke to Korach and all his company, saying, Tomorrow morning, Yehovah shall make known who is his and who is Kodesh, and come near to him. And let him bring near to him the one whom he chooses. Do this, take fire holders, Korach, and all your company, and put fire in them and put incense in them before Yehovah tomorrow. And it shall be that the one whom Yehovah chooses is the Kodesh one. Enough of you, sons of Levi. And Moshe said to Korach, Hear now, you sons of Levi. Is it little to you that the Elohim of Yisrael has separated you from the congregation of Yisrael to bring you near to himself to perform the service of the Mishkan of Yehovah and to stand before the congregation to serve them? And that he has brought you near to himself, you and all your brothers, the sons of Levi, with you. Yet you seek the kahuna as well. 
therefore, you and all your company are assembled against Jehovah. And Aaron, what is it that you grumble against him? And Moshe sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and they said, We are not coming up. Is it little that you have brought us up out of the land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, that you would also seize total rule over us? Also, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Would you bore out the eyes of these men? We are not coming up. And Moshe became very displeased and said to Yehovah, do not respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, nor have I done harm to any of them. Then Moshe said to Korach, Tomorrow you and all your company shall be there before Yehovah, you and they and Aaron. And take each one his fire holder, and you shall put incense in it, and let each one bring his fire holder before Yehovah. Two hundred and fifty fire holders, and you and Aaron each one with his fire holder. So each one took his fire holder and put fire in it and laid incense on it and stood at the door of the tent of appointment and Moshe with Moshe and Aaron. And Korach assembled all the congregation against them at the door of the tent of appointment. Then the esteem of Yehovah appeared to all the congregation. And Yehovah spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from the midst of this congregation, and let me consume them in a moment. But they fell on their faces and said, O El, Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, when one man sins, are you wroth with all the congregation? And Yehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the congregation, saying, Move away from around the tents of Korach, Dathan, and Abram. So Moshe rose up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke to the congregation, saying, Please turn away from the tents of these wicked men. Do not touch whatever belongs to them, lest you be consumed in all their sins. Then they moved away from around the tents of Korach, Dathan, and Abiram. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of their tents, with their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moshe said, By this you know that Jehovah has sent me to do all these works, not because of my own heart. If these die as all men do, or if they are visited as all men are visited, then Jehovah has not sent me. But if Jehovah creates what is unheard of, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the grave, then you shall know that these men have scorned Jehovah. And it came to be, as he ended speaking all these words, that the ground under them split apart, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and with all the men, with Korach, with all their goods. So they and all those with them went down alive into the grave, and the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. And all Israel who were round about them fled at their cry, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up. And fire came out from Jehovah and consumed the two hundred and fifty men who were offering incense. And Jehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Say to Eleazar, son of Aaron, the Kohen, that is to say priest, to pick up the fire holders out of the blaze, for they are Kodesh, and scatter the fire some distance away. The fire holders of these men who sinned against their own lives, let them be made into beaten plates as a covering for the altar, because they brought them before Jehovah, therefore they are Kodesh. And let them become a sign to the children of Israel. And Eleazar the Kohen took the bronze fire holders which those who were burned up had brought, and they were beaten out as a covering on the altar, a remembrance to the children of Israel that no stranger who was not of the seed of Aaron should come near to offer incense before Jehovah, and not be like the by be like Korach and his company, as Jehovah has said to him through Moshe. 
But all the congregation of the children of Israel grumbled against Moshe and against Aaron the next day, saying, You, you have killed the people of Jehovah. It came to be when the congregation assembled against Moshe and against Aaron that they turned towards the tent of appointment and see the cloud covered it. And the esteem of Jehovah appeared, and Moshe and Aaron came before the tent of appointment. And Jehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Arise from amidst this congregation and let me consume them in a moment. And they fell on their faces. So Moshe said to Aaron, Take the fire holder and put fire in it from the altar and lay incense on it, and go, hurry to the congregation, and make atonement for them, for wrath has gone out from Jehovah, the plague has begun. And Aaron took it as Moshe commanded, and ran into the midst of the assembly, and saw that the plague had begun among the people. And he laid on the incense, and made atonement for the people, and stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stopped. And those who died in the plague were fourteen thousand seven hundred besides those who died on account of Korach. Then Aaron returned to the Moshe at the tent, at the door of the tent of the appointment, for the plague had stopped. All right, so that's just chapter 16. Pretty crazy story. You have this notable priest, Korach. He's a, one of the descendants of Levi, and he decides that Moshe doesn't deserve his position, and that he wants it, and so he creates an uprising. And that needs to be a lesson to people, that God, when he rises, raises somebody up to be in a position of leadership or authority, whether you like them or you think you can do it better is irrelevant. And I'm sure Korach thought that he was holy and thought that he was in the good graces of Yehovah, but he created an uprising, and God does not look too fondly on that. As you can see, because they were literally swallowed up by the ground. And then, apparently, a group of people didn't learn from this, and decided to also create an uprising, and then 14,000 of them were killed by the plague. Very interesting story, to say the least. All right, we still need to read chapter 17 and 18. So, quite a bit left to get through. So, let's continue on, starting with verse 1, chapter 17. And Yehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and take from them a rod from each father's house. All their leaders, according to their father's houses, twelve rods, write each one's name on his rod. And write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi, for there is one rod for the head of each father's house. You shall then place them in the tent of appointment before the witness where I met with you. And it shall be that the rod of the man whom I choose buds and I shall rid myself of the grumblings of the children of Israel, which they grumble against you. And Moshe spoke to the children of Israel, and all their leaders gave him a rod, each for each leader according to their father's houses, twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods. So Moshe placed the rods before Jehovah in the tent of the witness. And it came to be on the next day that Moshe went into the tent of the witness and saw that the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi had budded, and brought forth buds, and blossomed, and bore ripe almonds. And Moshe brought out all the rods from before Jehovah to all the children of Israel, and they looked, and each man took his rod. And Jehovah said to Moshe, Bring Aaron's rod back before the witness, to be kept as a sign against the rebels, so that you put an end to their grumblings against me, lest they die. Moshe did as Jehovah had commanded him, so he did. And the children of Israel spoke to Moshe, saying, See, we shall die, we shall perish, we shall all perish. Anyone who comes near the Mishkan of Jehovah dies. Shall we be consumed to die? And Jehovah said to Aaron, You and your sons and your father's house with you are to bear the wickedness against the Mikdash, and you and your sons with you are to bear the the wickedness against your 
Kehuna, but bring with you your brothers of the tribe of Levi, two, the tribe of your fathers, to join you and serve you while you and your sons with you before the tent of witness. And they shall guard your charge and the duty of all the tent, but they do not come near the furnishings of the Kodesh place and the altar, lest they die, both they and you. And they shall be joined with you and guard the duty of the tent of appointment for all the services of the tent, but a stranger does not come near you. And you shall guard the duty of the Kodesh place and the duty of the altar, so that there be no more wrath on the children of Israel. And see, I myself have taken your brothers and the Levites from the midst of the children of Israel, a gift to you, given by Jehovah to the services of the tent of appointment. But you and your sons with you are to guard the Kehena, for all matters of the altar and behind the veil, and you shall serve. I have given you the, Ke the Kehena as a gift for service, but the stranger who comes near is put to death. Real quick, when you're hearing the Hebrew word kehuna, it's talking about the priesthood. So he's, he's saying, I have given the priesthood as a gift for service, but the stranger who comes near is put to death. So he's telling Aaron, you are, you know, I've, I've given you, but you and your sons with you are to guard the kehuna, to guard the priesthood. So just wanted to make that uh, clear for anybody who might be confused by that. Verse 8. And Yehovah spoke to Aaron, And see, I myself have also given you the charge of my contributions. All the Kodesh gifts, the children of Israel, I have given them to you for the anointing, and to your sons as a law forever. This is yours, of the most Kodesh gifts from the fire, all their offerings, all their grain offerings, all their sin offerings, all their guilt offerings, which they rendered to me are most Kodesh for you and your sons. Eat it in the most Kodesh place. Every male eats it. It is Kodesh to you. This also is yours, the contribution of their gift with all the wave offerings of the children of Israel. I have given them to you and your sons and the daughters with you. As a law forever, everyone who is clean in your house eats it. All the best of the oil and all the best of the new wine and the grain, their first fruits which they give to Yahweh, I have given them to you. The first fruits of all that is in their land, which they bring to Yahweh, are yours. Everyone who is clean in your house eats it. All that is dedicated in Yisrael is yours. Everyone opening a womb of all flesh which they bring to Yahweh whether man or beast, is yours. But the firstborn of the man you shall certainly ransom, and the firstborn of the unclean beast you ransom, and ransom their ransomed ones when one month old, according to your valuation, five shekels of silver, according to the shekel of the Kodesh place, which is twenty geras. But the firstborn of the cow, or the firstborn of a sheep, or the firstborn of a goat, you do not ransom. They are Kodesh. Sprinkle their blood on the altar and burn their fat as an offering made by fire for a sweet fragrance to Yehovah. And their flesh is yours as the wave breast and as the right thigh. It is yours. All the contributions of the Kodesh gifts which the children of Yisrael present to Yehovah with you and your seed with you. And Yehovah said to Aaron, you are not to have an inheritance in their land, nor have any portion in their midst. I am your portion, and your inheritance among the children of Israel. And see, I have given the children of Levi all the tithes in Israel, all the inheritance, in return for the service which they are serving, the service of the tent of appointment. And let the children of Israel no more come near the tent of appointment, lest they bear sin and die, because the Levites shall do the service of the tent of appointment. So they themselves bear their wickedness, a law forever throughout your generations, that among the children of Israel they are to have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they present as a contribution to Yehovah, I have given to the Levites as an inheritance. That is why I have said to them, 
Among the children of Israel, they have no inheritance. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the Levites, and say to them, When you take from the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them as your inheritance, then you shall present a contribution of it to Yahweh, a tenth of the tithe. And your contribution shall be reckoned to you as grain from the threshing floor and as feeling from the winepress. Thus you also present a contribution to Yehovah from all your tithes which you receive from the children of Israel, and you shall give from it the contribution to Yehovah to Aaron the Kohen. From all your gifts you present every contribution due to Yehovah from all the beasts of them, the Kodesh part of them, and you shall say to them, When you have presented the best of it, then the rest shall be reckoned to the Levites as the yield of the threshing floor and as the yield of the winepress. And ye shall eat it in any place you shall, you and your households, for it is your reward for your service in the tent of appointment. And bear no sin because of it when you have presented the best of it. And do not profane the Kodesh gifts of the children of Yisrael, lest you die. And that, my friends, is our Torah portion for this week. Pretty interesting stuff. We see God uh, confirm uh, Aaron and the priesthood. Uh, we see the responsibilities laid out and the priest's portion according to the tithes and things like that. The building of Aaron's rod. And then, of course, the beginning was the revolt of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, which I mispronounced about five times throughout that podcast well i hope you've been blessed this morning i hope you're enjoying these studies and i don't know how people couldn't be but you know it's a niche for people to listen to somebody just read the bible and talk about the scriptures it's not the most popular thing um you know majority of people just aren't interested and so to the few who listen to these Torah portions and these Bible studies who are content and blessed and filled to hear God's word you are much appreciated and I think you are blessed and I think that God is pleased with those who seek more knowledge about him and seek his word so uh, for whatever that's worth that's my thought on that and I recognize that those of you who do that are few those of you who support the podcast are also few. And so I thank you so much for all you do in helping me make this possible month after month. It's been, I think, five years now that I've been doing this, maybe even longer. And it's been my great pleasure. And uh, I'm very, very blessed to have had this opportunity. Well, that is all I have for you. Lord willing, I'll be back with you next week. Hopefully starting Monday with our... Uh, encouragement and wisdom from the Psalms and I pray that you have a blessed weekend. Peace and grace be with all of you and until next time, God bless. <laughs>